armed forces are recognized and respected around the world as being the finest and most professional, the best of the best. Yet these are amongst the most dangerous and trying times globally we've ever faced. But the British Army is so small it can't even fill Wembley Stadium. Chancellor Philip Hammond says a new budget chest unlocked for the NHS leaves no funds for other departments, including the Ministry of Defence. The current NATO target to spend at least 2% of GDP on defence is nowhere enough. A group of MPs says we need to increase spending on this area by up to £20 billion a year to enable our armed forces to be able to keep our country secure and operate globally in a proactive and reactive way. The government's number one priority is the defence of its citizens. This government should be disgraced at finding itself so critically short of funds to do so. Well, you're not alone, of course, thinking that. There was a parliamentary report published earlier this month, probably, that you saw across all parties that agreed more money needs to be spent. I've got a couple of observations. I don't know, I, I think you, I sense you saw the same report in The Times as I did, that that first Cabinet meeting after the weekend, where Philip Hammond said, I'd love Rachel to have been here, because her brother then realised that he's got no money, defence has got no money, housing has got no money, education's got no money, it's all going to the NHS. That's probably a debate for another day. Two things. Yes, you're right, of course. Of course, if we can. £20 billion is a lot of money. Karen, I don't know that we need conventional armed forces in the way that you might be describing. If you consider that this week there's been a report published, a Euro-wide, by Europol, European-wide, more than 200 terror pot plots that were either foiled, stopped or went ahead, or failed, I'm sorry, more than half were in the UK, more than half, so terror capital of Europe, you don't fight that, I don't think, with tanks, with aircraft, with ships, with soldiers, with Navy personnel. So, if you're going to spend that money, I'd like to know how you're going to spend it, because I don't think buying loads of boots, uh, boats on the ground works. Yes, well, there are two issues here. One is you need a, a critical mass of boots on the ground. Whatever way you look at it, our combined armed forces now are around 150,000. I mean, my father was commander-in-chief of the Central Indian Army. The Central Indian Army alone has 350,000 troops. We're talking about threats from Russia. But your dad we're talking, was in a different we're time, Karen. But we're talking, even today, if you look at America and China, their defence spending and their scale is in a completely different but level to ours. Them, we're, the fifth, we're the fifth largest spender of defence, so don't, let, let's not get it... You know, we are still a big spender, £36 billion a year. We're number five in the world. But we are short of troops at the moment. We're understaffed, about 10,000 shortage across our defence forces. But we're also, as you correctly say, Nick, we're fighting a hybrid warfare yeah. today in the world. Right. And for that hybrid warfare, you still need investment. You still need investment in our nuclear deterrent. The nuclear deterrent used to be funded by the Treasury. Now that's put into the defence budget to make up this 2% figure. Earlier it used to be with the Treasury. Pensions used to be somewhere else. Now that's been put into the 2%. But nuclear there's isn't been a the new warfare, there's been is a, it? No, but there's been a cut in real terms and a huge cut in our defence compared to, say, the 1990s, we used to spend 3% of our GDP on defence, and in my view, the world has got much more dangerous. I, can and, I just... And, on the, I, and just, just one more point okay. to make. We have the finest troops in the world, the Gurkhas, the Paras, the Special Forces, the Guards. The whole world respects our defence forces being the best in the world. They need to be properly resourced. Can I just show you what uh, Chairman of the Defence Committee, Dr Julian Lewis, says about this? If you invest in defence in peacetime, by paying the premiums and making yourself stronger, you actually make it less likely that the disaster will happen because the disaster we wish to avert is a full-scale conflict. And you tend not to have full-scale conflicts when your potential adversaries know that you're strong. I interviewed a guy called James Glancy last year, much decorated war hero from Afghanistan, won the gallantry medal. He and a group of uh, military heavyweights to, uh, sent a letter to Theresa May last year saying that we no longer have a credible army, navy or RAF. You know, we could no longer fight a, a conventional war. We're getting to the position where we no longer have enough troops to even act and to help allied forces. They're talking about ba banning our amphibious ships, which means we can't even go and help out people in disasters anymore. And it just, it, it just seems crazy to me that on a world stage... You know, this guy, Glancy, said to me last year that the, the government says it's spending 2% of its GDP. He doesn't believe that, but what he says is, even if they are, it needs to be 3%. Mm. And this Commons Defence Committee says exactly the same. And, and we haven't had aircraft carrier capability, which no, are coming up to no. almost one decade with everything we've been through. If you Think of what we've been through in the last decade and we haven't had aircraft carrier capability. I find that absolutely okay, but shocking. But you're happy 
I mean, because we have this discussion about tax many times around here. I mean, it's quite clear that we are going to pay increased taxes to pay for the additional money going to the National Health Service. You're quite happy to pay increased taxes, all of you, the, the, you always... No, I'm not. No, I'm not. So I'm you don't want to pay increased taxes to have more tr a bigger army, bigger navy, bigger air force. So how do you pay for it? Well, in I the thought NHS, you meant the you NHS. I thought waste. you meant the NHS. Sure, you but no, no, I'm... That's so disingenuous. You know, there, there may be efficiencies, but not enough to fund what we need. And I, you know, I, I really feel listening to... I, I kind of agree with you, Nick, which feels strange. <laughs> listening to you, Karen, this feels like the real issue here is about the fact that our position in the world has changed. Why are we competing with China and Russia and India? We're a, a much smaller nation. We no longer have an empire. You know, and I think that... Actually, underneath this, is that is the conversation that needs to play, take place. What, where should we be positioning ourselves? What kind of um, capability do we need? And also, this whole debate does feel like it's stuck in another era to me. One of the biggest threats, I mean, you mentioned the way threats have evolved, but we haven't talked about cyber warfare and disinformation. This is how states are now threatening the very nature of our democracy. Our government don't even understand this technology and how it works. Our, oh. our military intelligence agencies don't fully understand it. We need to be working out how to create a genuine the modern security force that can protect us from a the red letter day in think. your red outfit because you would agree with President Donald Trump. After oh, take a look at this. Oh, no. <laughs> but our destiny beyond the earth is not only a matter of national identity, but a matter of national security. So important for our military. Very importantly, I'm hereby directing the Department of Defense and Pentagon to immediately begin the process necessary to establish a Space Force as the sixth branch of the armed forces. Trump there clearly channeling Buzz Lightyear to infinity and beyond. And while I, while I have the microphone, just to, a couple of points, of course, let's remind viewers, we do have the Queen Elizabeth aircraft carrier now, Karan, and the Ministry of Defence wants to say the following. The Defence Secretary launched the modernising defence programme to strengthen our armed forces in the face of intensifying threats and... While we welcome the Defence Committee's preliminary report, we will not speculate on the outcome of the programme before we share our headline conclusions. The UK maintains the biggest defence budget in Europe and we have been clear we will continue to exceed NATO's 2% spending target. And, and, and this we've got to remember that the main objective of our armed forces, of all this investment, mm. is not to fight but to keep the exactly. peace. Exactly. Because soft power is useless without hard power and we need that hard power to be able to... And, and here is the new, the new Chief of the General Staff who's from a special forces background, uh, General Mark Carlton Smith. This is what he has to say. We need a more proactive, threat-based approach to our capability planning, including placing big bets on those technologies that we judge may offer exponential advantage, because given the pace of the race, to fall behind today is to cede an almost unquantifiable advantage from which it might be impossible to recover. So we can't fall behind. To your no, point, Apple, we sure cannot fall behind. We had, so we have... Uh, our, let's just remind ourselves, our current defence spending is £36 billion, pounds, which is not a small number. If you had the extra £20 billion you think we need today, would our uh, armed forces be able to spend that in the most strategic way on the realistically evolving threat that we face. I think that we need to work out a coherent strategy before any extra money would actually do what it needs to do. I don't think we're there yet, in all honesty. <laughs> without a doubt that they would be able to. Greg, you... you... Well, I mean, part of, the, I mean, of course, you can't look at this without going back to Afghanistan and Iraq and say, you know, we didn't need to go into Iraq. If having less troops means we don't go into Iraq, then I'm all for it, in all honesty. I don't think you need... What you do need... I mean, when, when you talk about defence of the nation, we all agree that's the role of government. Mm. What we don't necessarily say is it's to do sort of different things all over the world, often to our disadvantage, is what's happened with, certainly with Iraq and Afghanistan. But that's an excuse for cutting numbers. I mean, you mentioned numbers before. Let's look at some of these numbers that we have here. We're down to 81,700 soldiers, 33,450 Navy, three... 32,800. That's nothing. It's a total of about 140,000, as we you are, said. We doesn't have, even fill the stadium. We spend more than any other country in Europe. Right? We spend more on defence than any other country. But what are we spending it on? Because in now the question far, is, if, the and question is, the to meet our NATO, our if NATO we wanted, commitment if we wanted well. to, you'd have to say, what do we wish to spend? I mean, for instance, I suspect the Ministry of Defence has always been the least efficient of all the government departments. Right? Well, you know. More people, I think, in the Ministry of Defence than in any of those numbers. Uh, but you see, but one of the points that the new gen the Chief of the General Staff has made is you've got to be able to be proactive in one mm -hmm. sense, and you can argue what is that proactive yeah. in today's hybrid warfare world. 
but you've also got to be able to be reactive. You can't forecast things like September the 11th. Exactly. They happened overnight with no prediction whatsoever. But you've then got to have a force that is able to, uh, to react right, immediately. But have you never, ever had uh, a chairman of the defence... Uh, what's his name? The, the ch have you ever had a situation where they have asked for less? Have you ever had a situation where they haven't asked for more? You could about Carlton Smith. Well, all yeah, yes, yeah, all yeah. government departments yeah, he's, consistently he is going to say that, isn't ask he? for there more money. No, no, consistently. No, but here, but Defence has had real-term cuts. If yes. you look going back to 2010 as, review, as, have, as have most departments, as I know, but the security has, of the nation is by far the number one priority of any government. But security isn't the same isn't the same this is a as, big part of it. as having a, a massive force that allows you to go and do no things. No one's massive. It's world. already tiny. It's already way, way smaller than it should be. I, I, I think it's critically tiny and it's irresponsible to have it so low at this stage.